Hey everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This one's going to be on ProRender with the new version 3.1.10 build. We're going to be looking at some volume glass, which is really exciting and very awesome that it is now implemented in the engine. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. We also have a Discord server. If you need any help, you can jump on there. The link is in the video description below. And we also have a Patreon, so if you would like to donate a few dollars to help keep these videos coming, feel free to do so. You can check it out on the Patreon page. The link is down below in the video description. So ProRender has been, uh, you know, chugging along. There's been a lot of new updates. If you haven't yet, go ahead and jump into the GitHub. I'm going to put a link to this particular location below. So you could uh, download this weekly development build, but this is a pre-release. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. You can um, take a look at all the different things that they have been doing with uh, some different supports and some other things like that. But really, what I want to talk to you guys about is volume glass, which is something that's been missing in the program. It also means that they are going to be starting to use volumes in general. So I just want to show you guys how to use it and, um, you know, why it's so exciting. So let's go ahead and I have a fresh blender session open here we're going to change this over here to radeon pro render and I, I do recommend it's probably a good idea for you guys to just have a file like this available just so that you can do this on your own and test out materials and things like that um shout out to jokafa who is freaking amazing by the way if you don't know who that is jump on the discord and check out jokafa uh, i'll put a little card here so you can check out one of his videos but he has some amazing stuff that you really should check out and um, a true wizard at creating materials. So let's take a look here and we'll go into the rendered view. And so here we go. We don't really have a lot going on here. There's just the floor plane and we have these three items down here. Let's save the file real quick. And I'm just going to scale this ground plane up a bit. So let's take this. I'm going to change the scaling here. Let's do maybe 10. So we get a little bit more um, clear idea about what's going on on the floor here. And let's change this, move this over, move this over. You guys know the drill at this point, hopefully. And we're just going to take a look at some of this stuff down here. So I'm going to click on this one here. We're going to actually let's go down here to the materials library. So materials library, and we're going to click on a glass. I like to start from these because they do have some really nice settings. I'm going to click import material, and I'm going to shift select these, and I will link the material to that one so that they all have the same. Then we're going to go to the world settings. And this time I'm just going to use the sun and sky because you know what? It's built in. It's there. It's fine. We're just going to use that. So let's check this out. So here's our glass. And let's actually take this and we're going to make this a little bit more rough. So let's put a rough there. Let's put this a lot more rough. Maybe a one just so that we can keep that a little bit easier for us to look at. So let's take a look at this here. And with the glass, it's kind of no big deal, right? You're used to seeing this, you know what it is. It's fairly obvious. We just have a see-through material here. And we're going to click on allow caustics because it allows some of the caustics to be portrayed uh, through the glass here. And I'll just put this light a little bit closer to our glass material there. And this is what you're used to seeing. Uh, let's shade smooth and I'll subsurf two on that monkey there. And you're used to seeing this sort of thing. Now, the really great thing about ProRender, and there are other ways to do this in other engines, but I think that ProRender really handles this very well. And it has to do with the way that the shading is done for glass in particular. There's a lot of ways to have some really, really cool effects. And I've, I've done some glass sculpture concepts and stuff like that with this engine. It renders super fast and it looks really neat. So basically you can start with a reflection color here and we can make this um, an orangey color. So the refraction color is actually a different color. You see that. And then the reflected color is here. So we have this like orangey color. 
and the refraction if we want to make this more of like a blue or something like that you can do that and you're literally coloring the refraction glass there so basically the glass coloring itself now the thing is with fluids fluid simulations especially things like um, ocean water or um, let's say it's orange juice or something like that there has to be a sort of volume absorption that happens there has to be like when light passes through the object there has to be some amount of coloring that's sort of captured by that fluid itself and that's where the refraction absorption comes in so if we look at the rpr uber node here and we look at the very very bottom you'll see that there's a refraction absorption input there's a color and then there's a number here and the number there when it's set to zero nothing happens and even if you take this and you put, let's say, a red in there, nothing happens because the refraction absorption distance is not there. There's nothing there. So if we add a value here, like a 1, you can start to see that a color is now being presented into that glass. And depending on the thickness of the piece that you're looking at, whatever your mesh is, it's going to change the overall uh, coloring of that object. So glass sculptures, um, hand-blown glass, things like that um, will usually use this as a method to make some interesting things happen. So you can see here that the cube itself, there's really not a whole lot going on. It just looks like it's red now. But if you look at this one here, this plane that we have, you can see it's very, very different. It has this more purplish color. And if we turn it to the side, you can see that now, because the this view from this end here is more thick than this perspective here, you can see that there is a difference in that color. And if you've ever looked at um, acrylic or different types of glass or like a, uh, a Coca-Cola bottle or something like that, you'll notice that there is this greenish effect or sometimes a different colored effect depending on the thickness of that glass. And that is basically what you're seeing is this refraction absorption. And even more so if we take a look at Suzanne over here, and let's actually take the light and we're going to move this right over here so you can see this a little bit easier. And I'm actually going to pull it really close because I want to get some caustics if possible. So let's come over to this side here. Let's actually take the intensity of the background and I'm just going to bring this down a bit. But basically there is a lot going on with this more complex glass. So when you're making something like a sculpture or a concept or something like that, you might want to consider taking your glass piece, whatever it might be, and just changing a couple things about it, like the reflected color there. If we take this and we make it a green, for example, you can see how that has a different effect on it. And then you can see how the volume uh, refraction absorption here, how that is changing. Now, I really want to make this clear that this doesn't mean that volumes are actually supported yet. And I did some testing because when I saw this, I was very excited. Um, because it's one of the things that's been missing from ProRender is this awesome volume glass uh, method that they have of making this um, more complex material. But volumes itself, like uh, smoke and um, mist or fire and stuff like that, I, I, it doesn't appear to be working just yet, but this is a really great step in the right direction. Um, and what's really cool about this is you can change this absorption distance. So if we instead make this a 3, you can see that it's it still has that more sort of reddish or there's now a violet color in the middle, but it also is this more bluish color on the thinner areas. And if we take that and we kind of like split the difference, let's make this a 1.5, for example, you can see that now it's even more presence. And if I change this to a 0.1, it's more filling up that glass and it's more sort of like easy for the color to be absorbed in those areas. So basically, the lower the number here, the more present that absorption color is going to be. And you can change this to whatever you want, like a yellow, and you can see how that will affect the overall coloring of your glass. And the higher the number, so let's do like a you know 5, for example, the higher the color, the more it will only be present in the thicker area. So if we jump over to our... Uh, just like a, a glass pane over here. Let's move this 
and we'll bring this to the side and zoom in a little bit and let's change this to like a three. You can see that that edge there, the yellowish color, let's actually change it to a red so it's a little bit more present. You can see that it's more apparent there than it is there. So really exciting stuff. Um, I encourage you guys to play more with this engine and report any sort of bugs and stuff because it is fantastic to see that this alternative to Cycles is really getting along. The render times and quality just keeps improving with this engine, and I strongly recommend that you guys give it a chance, play with it, break it, let the developers know what's going on. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you got something out of this, and I will see you guys next time on DJ Tutorials.